have a problem. You see, I have this knack for starting sketchbooks but never finishing them. And to be honest, most of my finished paintings have their birth in these cluster of pages. These little guys are where the true magic begins. That is why I've developed four tips to help me start my sketchbooks off right and be successful in finishing them before I even lay pencil to page. Tip number one, don't stress about the first page. Instead, take some post-it notes and write out 10 to 20 goals that you would like to accomplish in your sketchbook. Don't ask me why I like using post-it notes on the first page. It's just less of a commitment on my part. I know, I'm weird. Getting back to the topic at hand. I usually break down my goals into 10 to 20 items, which fit into five categories. What I have found over the years is that by just taking a little bit of extra time to plan ahead with this step, you are more likely to actually enjoy your sketchbook and finish it without skipping around and leaving it half empty like I've done in the past. This planning method is especially good for those days when you just don't want to create. Tip number two, learn the art of thumbnails. Thumbnail sketches can be done in a variety of ways, but the main gist of them is to just be quick and sometimes messy. Usually they take between one to 15 minutes, depending on what you're actually trying to sketch. I use these anytime I feel like I'm in a creative rut. They are small and less intimidating and meant to help you process artistically what is actually inside your brain. Usually by just getting my hand moving on the page and drawing random doodles, it sparks my imagination and gets me into a creative mood to expand on one of these little beauties even further. Tip number three, renew and refresh. Sometimes when I'm in a creative rut, you know those times, I'll take an old drawing from a previous sketchbook and transfer it into my new sketchbook with printer paper and a graphite pencil. Then I'll use this basic sketch as a rough draft and see how I can push the original drawing to look the same yet completely different. This exercise can actually expand your style and even help you play around with other styles in a less intimidating way. Tip number four, remember sketchbooks are not just for drawing. Your sketchbook is meant to be an extension of you, basically a journal of your thoughts, inspirations, and even mistakes. It's meant to be messy and unpredictable. Thus, feel free to add anything you wish to it. Journal entries, magazine clippings, even just some random pink page that makes you happy. Art is about exploring and pushing yourself, not making things perfect. And that is what your sketchbook is supposed to be. In conclusion, your sketchbook should be a safe place to explore and learn, and should be for your eyes only. Unless, of course, you want to share it with others. What up, y'all? I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the second video of a six-part series where I break down my approach to constructing a full painting. In this step, I showed you some key pointers on how to set up your sketchbooks, which I later use my sketchbooks to create ideas for full finished products. With that covered, here is a question for you. What is your favorite thing to draw in your sketchbook? I would love to read your feedback down below. 
Also, if you are a true misfit tan and stay to the very end of the video, make sure to hit the like button and here is a nice little puzzle for you to solve. As always, y'all, lots of love to you and I will see you in the next video. Go explore and have fun on your new venture with your handy dandy sketchbooks.